and welcome back with part two of this tutorial. So let's pick up where we left off. We learned the main features and the settings of Visual Subsync and we created our project so we can start subtitling. You could potentially face two different types of situation. In the first one, your client already gave you a file that is in sync with the video, so you just have to translate it. So to add the file, you need to go to Edit, Insert File, and you pick your SRT file. On the Sound Waves tab section, you will see the subtitles overlapping the sound waves, and that is totally normal. You can click on a subtitle down below to select it, and you can hit Play to listen to that beat. Now, when you translate from a language to another, let's say, for example, here from English to Italian, it could be that the target language is less concise, meaning that the words or the syntactic structure is longer. And this could mean that you might have to adjust the length of the subtitle by dragging over it on the left or on the right. The second scenario is it's up to you to create the subtitles from scratch. I'll always suggest to watch the whole video before you start subtitling so you can already get a sense of what the video is about, uh, its pace, and even the potential text or signs that are going to pop up on the screen. And that's going to be very useful, for example, if you need to translate the video. And the sound waves will already help you understand when there's no talking because they're going to get thinner and you won't see any peaks. So that means the person is not talking there. And for example, it's right here, 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 and so on. Always remember the rules we discussed about in a previous video. Uh, so the minimum and maximum length of each subtitle. So if we're making subtitles from scratch, you can add a new subtitle by dragging over the sound waves, like so. Then you right click and add subtitle. Here you can type the text and right down below you can see the list of all the subtitles you will create. Once you start creating your subtitles, you will notice down here, they will tell you the number of the subtitle, its length, the text, and then there's the reading speed. And this one is essential because the color is going to tell you if the reading speed is optimal or not. So for example, red means it's too fast, orange is fast but acceptable, yellow is a bit fast, Green is either good or bad, so that, that's the kind of color you need to aim for. And blue is a bit too slow or even too slow. Now let's say I create a subtitle, I'm gonna tap the text and the reading speed is red. Okay, perfect. This one is actually red. What I can do is drag the subtitle a bit further to the right or to the left until it becomes acceptable and of course if you can do it so for example i can zoom in and i can try and drag it a bit more like so and now it says it's fast but it's acceptable and make sure you don't overlap it with the next subtitle of course so don't do this but just stop right here I would always recommend wearing headphones when you're working on the subtitles so you can properly hear the voices and make sure you're very precise and you don't want to start too close to the first peak nor too far away. And if you're wondering why, the answer is really simple and we're gonna make a test. In the first case, you will cut out a part of the dialogue and that's not okay. And in the second one, you're going to start too soon and you're basically going to make spoilers because the viewers will start reading the subtitles before the sound comes and it's also super annoying. If you head over to edit, you can undo or redo whatever you made if you ever need to. Once you're done subtitling, I suggest you to play the whole video and check if you made any typos or if you made any mistake with the synchronization part. If you're happy with what you did, then you can click on File, Save As, and you're gonna type a name for your SRT file. 
creative talk apps, for example, and you're just gonna save it. Of course, subtitling is not as easy and as smooth as that, because you might face very fast dialogues or overlapping situations, and you might also struggle with the translation part, because as we already said, subtitles has very strict parameters. By the way, I'm thinking of making a video of my workflow so you can follow along and we can try and face different types of scenarios together and you can see what it's really like to work as a subtitler and what kind of solutions I can find to different problems. Um, yeah, that's the script. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. I would really like to hear your opinion. And as usual, if you like this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you want to. I would really like to help you understand how this fantastic job works and also to maybe inspire you to become a subtitler as well. See ya!